wave at the back to indicate to the starter that the field is set. Then we'll get the uh, five second board, red light on, red light off, and we will be racing for 2023 in Victorian Formula Four Championship. Pole position, Jack Bussey, he made his debut late last year uh, at Phillip Island, I believe, during the Island Magic meeting, and he's alongside Zach Lobko in the CHE racing car, so it'll be on between these two uh, as they're bouncing against the 7,000 RPM rev cut in these Red lights Formula on. Fords. And we are racing, and uh, Jack's got himself a little bit of wheel spin there. Zach made a very good start. We'll uh, let the officials adjudicate on that, but possibly a slightly better start than <laughs> maybe legit. But uh, And the Kent cars streaming through as well. A great start from uh, Richard Davison at the head of that field. Wonderful images provided to us here. That's an iconic shot looking straight down the barrel on the main straight here at the Sandown International Raceway. So a nice clean start. Further down in the 1600 field, it's Richard Davison who's leading the way from Grant Walker who steps behind the wheel of his Swift. Uh, we're normally used to seeing him in the tight end. That was a moment there. Uh, for Matthew Holmes, so you can see the car was bottoming out on corner exit there on the kerb. Coming through the action cam out of turn four there, the car was bottoming, bottoming, bottoming out. Uh, only a uh, 40 mil ride height uh, on these cars that are incredibly low to the ground. His seat belts would be a little bit tighter having uh, gone through there. Yeah, he would have been, uh, that wall would have been looming up very, very large. And see them now filtering through the um, uh, turn nine or Dandy Road as it was always known colloquially and just a short sharp run into heavy braking for the complex to bring you on to the straight now this uh, sand down very much a, a circuit that the two critical corners for sand down are the uh, turn 12 which brings you on to the straight and turn four, I uh, believe it used to be known as NGK, which takes you on to the back straight. Back straight here is actually the fastest part on the circuit. And it, it is slightly uphill, but the Formula Fords will be approaching 230 kilometers an hour before they lift to go over Rothman's Rise. And uh, so you see them come through turn four here. Now wonderful images coming up on the screen. Really got to be patient, want to make sure you get the car rotated and get back to full throttle as quickly as you possibly can there. And then just plucking gears as you run up the hill. Zach Lobko doing a great job in the lead at the moment. He's showing at the top of the times, but he's got Bailey Collins in the slipstream just behind him. So I dare say he'll close that gap as they come down into turn nine. The Liquor Legends car on screen at the moment doing a sensational job as well. So we just I noticed before as well that Jared Farrell, who's carrying our live onboard camera, here he is right now in the Geelong Performance Centre Spectrum. That's a wonderful part of the world down in Geelong. He's currently in ninth position, so he's made up a couple of spots uh, from the start and he's right in the thick of that slipstream as well. So obviously, Paul, you can touch on this a little bit more because you've got a lot of experience. Uh, I'm not throwing shade at you, but you followed other <laughs> Formula Fords in the past, yep. but the slipstream does make a dramatic difference, uh, not only here at Sandown, but also at Phillip Island, especially in Formula Fords. Absolutely, any of the long, fast circuits, we, we don't have aerodynamic downforce, uh, but like anything that moves through the air, we create aerodynamic drag so if you can and with only uh, 135 horsepower relatively low powered by uh, racing standards so you want to be um, any opportunity uh, we look like somebody has found the wall perhaps on the exit uh, trying to see who that is looks like one of the Miguel's uh, rolling to a stop Collins in the lead now as well so showing on our timing screen as, as well it looks like race control has handed down a five second time penalty to Zach Lobko so that's unfortunate for his early start in this weekend or I should say a fast start but Bailey Collins has made his way through with just over 16 minutes or just under 17 minutes I should say in this race uh, to go and you can see the heat haze uh, coming up from the track as well. It's baking hot at the moment. Thankfully, nowhere near as hot as it was yesterday. But this is a great battle ensuing for the lead of the race. And Bussy is the fastest man on track at the moment with a 1 minute 16 flat. Yeah, he has closed the gap to young Joe Fawcett in front of him. Joe from uh, Ballarat. Um, another... Uh, oh, we have a safety car. We have a safety car. Boards and flags are out. We'll see if we can pick up... What has caused that, I would dare say it would be that white car that we saw rolling to a, 
stop uh, back in, I think, around. And in fact, that may well. I think it's Nick Mendez. Yep. Unfortunately, Maybe Nick so. Mendez. And yeah, we can see that on, parked on driver's left. Very fast part of the circuit. Not somewhere you'd want to be leaving uh, a car and trying to control that under yellows. I think a, a, a wise decision from race control yep. to bring the field under control and see if they can't uh, recover that car. So we can see an official to the right-hand side of that car from our point of view making his way up. So he'll just check in on the driver and give him the thumbs up and make sure they're all good. And then they'll get the all clear to hop out of the car before the tow truck comes along and loads the Formula Ford onto the back of it and takes it to the pit paddock. Uh, early indications, it's a little bit hard to see here with the uh, heat haze uh, in the distance there, looking about 900 metres away from where we are at the camera point. Um, but it didn't look like there was too much damage on that car, although you can see that it looks like one of the mirrors on the right-hand side uh, is a little bit skew -if. So we're hearing there might have been a car through the air as well, so there might have been a little bit of contact between other vehicles we're hearing from the van. So we'll hopefully... Uh, Get a little bit more information as that one unfolds, but you can see the cool drive Commodore on the main straight ready to collect, uh, is waiting to uh, collect the leader. So as it stands, it's Bailey Collins in the lead of the race ahead of Zach Lobko, Joe Fawcett, Bussy, Strickland, Harry Blanchard in sixth position, Mains Rutty, Bezik and Jared Farrell and Damon Woods rounding out the top 10 in the Apex Steel Spectrum. Yeah, and uh, dropping to check in on the Formula Ford 1600s. Uh, we have Richard Davison uh, holding down the lead there from Grant Walker. So as you say, this is the spiritual home of Formula Ford racing in Australia all the way back in 1969. Seems like such a long time ago, but it's probably a good time to bring up the fact that there is a book uh, coming out very soon and it's about the 50 years of history and legacy of Formula Ford racing in Australia which has been uh, put together uh, at the moment by Phil Marinon. He's working uh, with, uh, with with publishers in the background trying to get that uh, book ready and he's uh, <laughs> doing the uh, <laughs> making the, uh, the checks and the proofreads at the moment and he's just giving me a quick update on it at the moment. He's got a second draft at the moment so uh, keep an eye out for that book because it's a brilliant read. Uh, it's got lots of photos and a uh, huge amount of information and the, the chronicles, uh, sorry, chronicling uh, Formula Ford racing in Australia. So, and of course, it touches on the fact that this, the, the very first race, it wasn't a championship or anything at that stage. It was a demonstration race just to talk about this new formula yep. that was coming out of Europe and they brought it out to Australia with enormous success. Yeah, in 69, it was a one-off race and then that in 1970 was the first full series and Richard Knight, actually went on to win that inaugural series in the Beep Still well-owned Elfin 600. Um, and that team, I think, secured the first three or more uh, of the series wins. So uh, a well-storied team. And the good thing about the book, great reading. I encourage anyone that's a motorsport fan to, uh, to pick one up and to, to have a read of that. But it comes back to, and we've spoken about this before, that Formula Ford has been that breeding ground of talented young drivers, but it has contributed so much more to the motor racing landscape when you think about the, the young engineers that got to uh, cut their teeth and learn their trade. You look at the Australian engineering companies, we mentioned Elfin initially, but you go through, um, you know, through, through Wren, you've got, and of course today, Ball and Racing Developments with the Spectrum chassis being sold now in, in Europe, in North America, uh, winning races and championships all around the world. And uh, particularly as the carbon fibre tubs started to take over in the higher formulae, the uh, space frame chassis nature of Formula Ford provides for that small scale manufacturer and for those engineers to be able to uh, apply their trade without needing millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of high-tech equipment. And just some of the names that have also got their start in Australian Formula Ford and gone on to bigger and better things behind the scenes of also getting their start with Michael Ball and so he's seen his fair share of uh, young engineers getting their start here and making uh, their way through but 
it's good to see that there's also people like Luke Ellery out there who uh, was a racer, was a, a part of the uh, Rising Stars campaign back in the day, back in the late noughties, yep. uh, between 2000 and 2010. Uh, he then went on to start his own team and he's, uh, he's running a, 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 a successful factory uh, out in uh, the Gippsland region and uh, doing a beautiful job restoring uh, classic and uh, modern Formula Fords as well. So it, it, it just caters for so many people to get their start. Yours truly included getting a, a commentary start with Formula Ford way back when, about 16 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And then the, and that's the other side to it as well, whether it's, uh, whether it's people that go on to be officials or administrators in the sport, um, definitely the, the journalists uh, yourself yeah, you go, you've got our V8 sleuth in, um, and you've also got Mark Walker, and we've got just a host of the brightest talent in the Australian motorsport journalism that cut their teeth yep. again uh, in Formula Ford. Quite often working for David Siegel's um, media and communication services who held the uh, PR contracts for Formula Ford for a good number of years as well especially through those uh, Ma Margaret Hardy days as well. And she, she did so much to contribute to the sport, gave so much to the uh, young men and women who made their way uh, through Formula Ford racing as well. Over the off season for, for the VSRS, Victoria State Race, uh, sorry, Victoria State uh, Race Series. Race Series Inc. Sorry, yes. tongue tied there. Uh, signing Triple Eight Home Loans as a category partner as well, the uh, corporate partner jumping on board for a multi-year deal. Uh, to support Grassroots Motorsports. So it's great to have them on board uh, this weekend, just putting your VSRS hat on at the moment. Absolutely, and, and yeah, the chairing the v VSRS Incorporated has been um, something I've been proud to be able to do and contribute, and uh, I thank the, the clubs and the executive for the uh, support they give me and the, the trust they place in me to, to chair that organisation. And We welcome Triple Eight Home Loans. It's fantastic to have them aboard. Uh, our first commercial partner for the uh, endeavour that we have here it helps to uh, ensure we can bring you these fantastic pictures and keep doing that. We're hoping to leverage that, grow those commercial arrangements that we have so that we can provide better value to, at the end of the day, the, you know, the, the men, women, boys, girls that go out here and, and enjoy racing their cars, put on amazing spectacle. They're the, they're the customer base. Yep. And we want to make sure we deliver value and, uh, and quality product for them to enjoy their racing cars in. Much and all, we love to watch them go racing. Uh, we're, we're all in this together. So uh, the partnerships we have with Cam and Triple Eight Home Loans goes a long way to helping us in, in ensure that we provide a world-class product. Big thank you to uh, Cam McKinnon and the team for jumping on board. I haven't seen him this weekend, but I'll keep an eye out for him in the paddock and try and say uh, hello at some stage. So eight minutes of, uh, sorry, just under eight minutes uh, left in this session. And it was a rather pragmatic decision as well to go to timed races and sessions uh, for the uh, competitive races in season 2023. Uh, indeed. Look, we... We look around the, the country and different states have done different things and we're parochial. We, we love motorsport here in Victoria. We're very proud of the, the uh, promoting clubs and the organising committees that bring us this racing. I think we have the, the best state racing anywhere in the, anywhere in the country. Uh, but that's not to say you, you, you rest on your laurels and assume that it's always right. So we've noted that other states have been running to a, a timed format and, and having experienced that as a competitor as well, it looks to be something that works. And we had some forums where we met with the drivers. Looks like we have got a race restart about to happen. So uh, so it, I think the cool drive safety car has cleared, yep. making Bailey Collins the effective safety car. So, so we're he's coming down for a restart. He'll be controlling the field. He's got Zach Lobko just behind him, Joe Fawcett in third position, Jack Bussey and Lachlan he's Strickland rounding out the top five. And he's pulled the trigger and he's underway. Yep, it's uh, again that long run down to, to turn one. You, you really leading's not really where you ideally want to be punching the hole in the air for the others behind you to swamp you but he's he's done a great job to maintain the lead through turn one a great restart for young bailey controlled it very well it's also these next few corners and essentially the first two sectors of this lap that is crucial the tires will be just a little bit below their optimal temperatures but it won't take too long for them to get back up to 
at temp temperature and pressure. You can see them coming over that, that curve on driver's right-hand side. That's a spectacular shot. Here comes Richard Davison keeping it nice and clean as per usual, doing a great job leading the 1600 category at the moment ahead of Grant Walker, who's still doing a great job in that beautifully presented swift. Look how close they are coming over turn six. Fast sweeping right-handed, deep under brakes coming up to turn nine. Bailey Collins holds it together. He's still ahead of Zach Lobko. And that was brilliant driving by Bailey. For, the, for those, uh, the TV doesn't quite do it justice. That's 230 k's approaching that corner. The car gets incredibly light and is dancing around. So Bailey showed a really cool head to hold on there. So this is a great battle as well. You can see the Geelong Performance Centre car of Jared Farrell. He's trying to pull out of the slipstream. So he's drawing alongside here is an onboard shot. So this is a prime example of exactly what they see as they come hurtling down towards turn one, about 225, 230 kilometers per hour. But around the outside, it looks like he'll take that position away from Mains Rutty. So that's a great effort from him as, as they go into turn two. And there's Damon Woods as well looming in the back end. And we saw the last lap board there. So it'll be the slipstream battle up the back straight. Uh, sheep stations to play for here and uh, that was just fabulous footage watching those two young guys race through turn one and give each other the room which just shows uh, the quality of the field and the quality of the racing that you get here look how incredibly close it is between the two leaders so that's Collins he's a little bit more under control as he comes through turn six this time around yeah. deep look they're using all as much road and there's Collins he's got it crossed up and he's oh. rotated the car and he's in the kitty litter at turn nine so that's Bailey yes. Collins out of the race didn't quite see the the start to that to see how that all unfolded whether he just simply in there a little hot on his own or, or what else but we'll uh, no doubt hear oh, is, is that, about that that looked like Joe Forster but here comes to check it flag so it's Zach Lobko who will cross the line it first of the rest of them and it's Lachlan Strickland up into P2 ahead of the pole set of Jack Bussey Eddie Bezik in fourth position and Harry Blanchard rounding out the top five. So that was a bit of a frantic finish there with race control electing to wave the chequered flag. But there you can see he was the race leader coming into turn nine and it ends in the sand trap and he looks a little bit disappointed with that. Yeah, he'll be, uh, he'll be gutted. No doubt we will find out what happened there. Bearing in mind Zach Lobko had that five second penalty to be served which looking on the screen at the moment, by virtue of them being backed up, will probably drop him down to somewhere around ninth or 10th position, I should imagine, but we will see. So that'll be a win for Strickland by the looks of it. I'm down here in Altatech Racing Garage and I'm joined alongside by uh, one of their drivers, Matthew Holmes, who is a little bit older than some of the other uh, usual junior drivers you might expect to see in Formula Ford. He is, of course, up from Tasmania, and he is also a paediatrician. So we'll touch on that in just a few moments. But, Matthew, you've actually got a long legacy of racing in the Victorian State Race Series. Could you go into that a little bit more in detail? Yeah, absolutely. So I love coming over here to race. I um, started racing over here about 10 years ago in Formula Vs. Um, did that for about three or four years and then finally got into my dream class of Formula Ford, which I love. So really competitive racing, which is great. So what brought you, brought you up to Victoria? Really the competition. Um, firstly, they don't uh, offer Formula Ford in Tasmania, but you know, just the depth of the field over here. Um, love the racing you know, style. It's really hard and, and cutthroat, but you know, really good when you achieve you know, a good result. Um, and also managed to land with a really good team over here as well. It's been really supportive of me, which is great. So last season, 2022, this season as well, what's, what are your ambitions for 2023? Obviously, you've got plenty of experience in Formula Ford now and the results are starting to come to uh, come to fruition now. Yeah, absolutely. So last year, I ended up third in the championship. So that, that was really, really good. Uh, I think this year, just try and get a couple of race wins to start with and um, then hopefully win the championship at the end of the year. That's kind of kind of the end goal, I suppose, with Older Tech. And as I understand, you've got a new partner on board for this year as well. Yeah, absolutely. So running with Older Tech, it's a racing team, and then got Dream Street Lending, who have come on board uh, starting this round's first round, which is a really exciting opportunity for us. So really happy with that. No worries at all. Thank you very much, Matthew Holmes. Taking our interest, race two of the Victorian State Racing Series. Round one here at Fantastic Sounddown. Who will win the sprint to the first corner? That's right, we're waiting for the, we've got the green flag at the back, we're waiting for them to come under starters orders, red lights on, out and they're off racing and it looks like Lachlan got the better start over Jack Bussey, who is getting swamped on that long run down into turn one, quite a long run from uh, start line, that drag race into one, 
Uh, oh, and someone's lost an engine cover, we can see in the background. No harm, no foul. It looks like it's gone clear. Yeah, a bit of Bipo Bears there back in the pack, but uh, a good start by all the cars who made it away on the front row of the grid. And just look at the pack of young drivers, and some, I guess, not so young, learning their craft and uh, finding the fast way around 3.1 kilometres here at Sandown. Onto the back straight, Bussy leads from Strickland and Blanchard. Yeah, good start from Harry, uh, Harrison Blanchard. Oh, and it looks like Fraser High, I think, is... Um, Car 17. They're, they're separate incidents we can see here. That right. engine cover is not related to Fraser, who uh, is stationed there. Hopefully he's out of the way and won't impact racing as... Oh, someone's got it. Oh, that was uh, one of the drives got a little bit loose coming up over the top. So they run down to complete the opening lap. And we've got some great shots of the trees right there. <laughs> <laughs> they come onto the straight to complete the opening lap. And they come across the line. We have got, yes, as we thought, Lachlan Streckland from Jared Farrell. From Harrison Blanchard, Edison Bezik. Uh, Jake dropping down to sixth by virtue of that start. And that's, that's the nature of racing here at Sandown Raceway, that, that long drafting up the back straight the uh, tardy start he's just been swamped on the opening lap and he's got all the work to do to come forward yeah but it's all come up uh, it's all it's all strickland at the moment isn't it yeah, yeah. for 1.5 seconds out there in the mcgall um so it, it's a great uh, to see drivers from other parts of australia coming down to sandown and taking in the uh, state racing series as he leads up the back straight. That lead is still about a second and a half. The Miguel slippery through the air as all these modern generation 90 and O spec cars have been. And you've had a bit to do with that over the years? Yeah, the uh, the evolution of the Formula Ford over 50 plus years, they uh, look quite different from uh, where it all started. They're a much, much longer and wider car than they are than they were initially, but the, the fundamental still applies, that you're looking at uh, mechanical grip only, no aerodynamic downforce, relatively low power, low grip, which is why it's such a great breeding ground for the young drivers who come through and excel. Lachlan Strickland's lead's been cut, definitely, so we see that uh, Jared Farrell has closed that gap uh, to just over a second, so Strickland leads from Farrell. Basic in third place. Lobko, who uh, picked up a good position there on that lap, was one car watched its break into, into turn one. Lobko has really made some ground. He started on the fifth row of the grid, and he's a guy to keep an eye on in the number seven car. Yeah, and Eddie Basic making uh, good progress as well with the quickest lap on the uh, last time around. They've taken half a second out of the leader. At this rate, a couple of laps time, we should have a, uh, a good battle there for the lead, which is what this category is known for. Here's a replay of the start. Keep your eye in the middle of the back of the, uh, the pack or the back of the field. We'll see contact and watch for uh, a flying engine cover, perhaps. Don't know that it's necessarily contact per se. It, it, it could be. Ah, yep, there it is. What I can see there is that's, that's probably indicative of a uh, one of the quarter turn Zeus fast is not quite being done up correctly. The wind gets under it. Um, and I think that was Peter Fitzgerald's yeah, was. engine cover. Car number 17, so uh, not ideal. It's nice to have all your bodywork attacked. Uh, but at the front, that was uh, something that happened further at the back. But at the moment, uh, Strickland's lead has been cut further. Down to three and a half tenths of a second. Strickland from Beswick, the two. We're talking about my gal at the front, aren't we? Well, no. Ed, Eddie Beswick is in a uh, Spectrum chassis, uh, running with the Synergy Motorsport team and uh, sweeping into the lead there. Uh, and uh, as we say, it was a bit faster than I anticipated. I said maybe a couple of laps, but this is now a four-way battle. Five-way battle. Five-way battle here for the Ford Racing at its finest uh, out here at Santa Raceway. Again, the two models made lend themselves to this type of racing so well. You can see the... You can see the uh, chain there, the snake of Formula Ford, which it's, it's famous for that as everyone's trying to stay in the toe. The leaders are trying to break out of that toe. Up over the top, a seriously fast corner, 230 kilometres an hour into that left-hand corner over the top. Um, slightly, as you approach it, it's just enough of a rise to be, oh, we've got someone in the fence, it looks like, at Dandenong Road corner. Uh, okay, trying to pick up the number there. Uh, looks like car number... Three. Harrison Blanchard. Harrison Blanchard. That's unfortunately for him having a, 
having a good run this weekend, actually showing some um, quite good pace as well. And yep. he appears to be in the fence. I uh, don't know whether or not we'll get a replay from our wonderful telecast partners. Uh, and uh, we probably will not the way it seems. Thank you very much, the telecast partner. Um, Still a big, great battle for the lead between Beswick and, and Strickland side by side as they go through. But Lovko, having done the fastest lap of the race, has really moved through. So this five car battle between Beswick, Strickland, Farrell, Lovko and Boosie. One, two, three, four, five. They've got a bit of a gap back to Mains Ruddy. There's Harrison Blanchard. Uh, second generation driver, though his grandfather actually raced at club level. Yep, safety, got a safety car has been car. scrambled for Harrison Blanchard, of course, Which the younger brother of Tim Blanchard. Absolutely. And part of the uh, Cool Drive family that are involved with supercars. They were the first team in supercars in 2023 to road their new spec Gen 3 race car. Yes. And uh, looking forward to seeing those, of course, here at Sandown for the Sandown 500. There is the and Cool there Drive is the Safety cool drive. Car. That, that's somewhat ironic, isn't it, that the Cool Drive Safety Car is being deployed while they recover the Cool Drive Formula Ford. Well, parts distribution is their business. And Indeed. there's a few parts that have been redistributed on the track. Uh, out there in Box Hill, there's a massive warehouse. There's Harrison Ford, uh, Sarah Harrison Blanchard. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. He's Ford. driving a Ford. Let's call that man Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. There we go. And he's hopping into... A, if only the medical car were the other brand, they could have been hopping into the Millennial Falcon. Oh, my. Da, 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 da. Paul Ziddy will be here all week. Please tip your waitress. Yes, try the buffet. <laughs> take my wife, please. Somebody take my wife. So this is unusual, Ziddy, because this race is actually timed. We don't have a preset number of laps. It's a 20 Yeah, correct. Race. That's, uh, that's something that we are uh, trialling at this round this year after some uh, meetings and, and some engagement with our customer base, the, the competitors of uh, the Victorian Motor Racing. Um, and this is now with my hat on as the chair of Victorian State Race Series Incorporated. You've got a bit on, haven't you? A look, I, we try. We try to give back to the sport. It, it gives so much to us. Absolutely love it. So if you can do something to help, it's what we're all about. So we, we've had these um, customer engagement sessions, found out what the whether there's things we can do to make it better. And uh, we've, we thought these timed events might be a way to go. So yeah. Uh, what it means from a race management perspective as well is you're not juggling number of laps and, um, and it allows them to, for example, right now, there's not frantic running through calculators to see how many laps are left to go. Can no. we fit it in with the safety car? It's like, well, just under eight minutes. we do the safety car and, and when the time's up, the time's up. So the order behind the safety car is Bezik ahead of Strickland, Farrell, Lobko and Boosie, the top five. And while we're at it, while there are people out there on the circuit, we're getting some fantastic shots from our good mates here at Blenlight TV. Uh, and we're seeing different uh, categories. Oh my God, it's a Swift. It's a DB1 Swift. From about not the 1980s, as we all are. Speaking of the 1980s, back in the day, in the 1980s, I was at Sandown, I was at track marshal. So if you ever wanted to be a flaggy, before I had a yep. glittering career in whatever the heck I've been doing for the last 35 years, wasting my life, I was here as a track marshal. The very first car we ever recovered from vehicle recovery was a broken down Formula Ford. And we we're trying to get the guy to hold the... the, the um, uh, toe strap? The toe strap. Yes. We were flat towing it back to the pits and we were saying, put your helmet on. And he didn't understand because he had only just arrived in Australia and he didn't have much English. Uh -huh. And uh, when we got him back to the, uh, the paddock, I said to him, what's your name? And he said... Thomas Mazetta. There we go. Yes. I'm right here at Sandown. And a, a good point you make there. The famous names globally, not just here in uh, in Australia, but globally that started their careers. Generally, they start in go-karting as five-year-olds, six-year-olds, but Formula Ford features prominently in their career pathways. And we've sure been does. very fortunate to rub shoulders and, and see some now household names, but back when they weren't famous when they were just starting out. It's a, a wonderful category. We see the crane truck there. You'll uh, notice if we have the uh, vision and the stay there that they'll pick that car up off the, uh, off the roll hoop. It's nicely balanced at that point. Deposit it on the truck, get it out of the way and they'll uh, be able to return us to our regular scheduled racing program. So we're going to have at least I think two more laps behind the safety car. So hopefully we'll get a dash to the flag, but if, if not, it's not the worst thing in the world to happen. And where else would you rather be than Sandown and 2023? 
There's going to be something new and old at Sandown in September. What's that going to be? Something new and old at Sandown. Uh, Sandown 500, it's coming back. Ah. At last, it should never have left. But anyway, Sandown 500 is going to be back at the circuit where it uh, where it originated as the, dear God, what was it? The Sandown 250, it was the Sandown 4 hour there for a while back in the day in the 60s, but then it was the 250 and then it was the Hang 10 400. And the dates of that are going to be uh, moved around because of the Victorian State Racing Series dates first round this weekend. Don't forget round two is going to be at Winton on the 22nd and 23rd of April. Mark down Phillip Island for round three, run by our friends at Pi Arc, uh, May 26 to 28. Round four back here at Gloria Sandan in August. Will it be 23, 24 degrees? Maybe not, but it will be the 11th or to the 13th of August. Back to the island for round five, September 22 to 24. And the final round will be at Calder. Now, how good is that going to be? to be back at Calder on October 27-29. We absolutely have everything. Fingers, toes, eyes. If you can cross it, we've got it crossed. That that can come to fruition. Obviously, it's marked as TBC. Uh, we, uh, we promote the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championships on behalf of Motorsport Australia. Yep. And so for us to be able to uh, undertake racing at Calder Park, it would quite rightly have to hold a Motorsport Australia track license. So that's the process that the management of that facility and Motorsport Australia are discussing. Way above my pay grade, I just stand by in nervous anticipation that we may be, in fact be able to go racing there this year. Wouldn't it be great? Called up. So many wasted out. Wasted? Yeah, okay. Some people would say wasted, but I've spent a big part of my life out at Calder, at the track, at the Dome. So at many the Guns N' Roses concert. Didn't go to the Guns N' Roses. In the Roses. car park trying to get out of the Guns N' Roses <laughs> concert. I think, I think there's still some cars on the freeway now yep. that are just exiting the car park there's from some, the Guns N' Roses there's concert. Some, there's some fans trying to get out of the pits, uh, out of the public car parks from uh, uh, after the aftermath of the 2019 French Grand Prix. But we won't go into that. But Calder Park, the f people forget, the first permanent home in the Australian Grand Prix uh, from 1980 onwards until it moved to uh, 85 in Adelaide. Prior to Calder, Bob Jones stepping in and securing the new rights to the Australian Grand Prix. Uh, there was a, it was a regular, uh, uh, it was a nomad around the country, and it moved uh, right around. We're getting an indication now. I know that I was hopeful that there wasn't going to. Uh, we're going to go racing after this, but clearly the crane is still on the track, moving the Lanchard car to safety. So Beswick leads from Strickland, Farrell, Bobco, Bussy, Mains, Rutty. Collins, Fawcett, Woods, and Sellers. Yes. And leading the uh, the Kent class. Is. We're just waiting for the screen to flick over. Yep, you'll have uh, Richard Davison. Richard Davison. Yep, from Who Grant raced Walker. a 5,000 here back in the day. A Formula 5,000. Okay. Yep. And As lived to tell the tale. And lived to tell the tale. All the Davisons raced 5,000 here. Absolutely. John raced um, 5,000 Alex! Yep. Driver, and Harrison, Harrison Sellers doing very, very well, uh, had an unfortunate incident in qualifying and was a rear of grid, was not able to get the car back together in time for yesterday's race. So he's come from uh, stone cold motherless last to be inside the top 10 here as we go around behind the safety car drivers trying to keep some heat in their control Avon uh, Aspec Road Radial Tyres. Aspec? They're an Aspec. You can't call them that. No, oh, you, sorry, you, you mean capital R, the letter yes, R. Yes, exactly. Right. And uh, they've been, they replaced the Avon ACB10. They did. Which we raced on in Australia for quite a number of years. Yep. Uh, Yokohama have been an incredible supplier, very supportive, uh, very helpful to us from a technical perspective as well. And we the are. tyre itself has uh, just been superb. And here we are at... I'm Brannigan, that's Ziddy, and that's... Indeed. <laughs> and the that's, pit crew. That's why typically you hear us and don't see us. I oh, know, uh, I've got a great head for radio. Yes. But yeah, the uh, Yokohama have been a wonderful supporter of the category, and the tyre itself has been uh, very... Good for the category. Yeah, we can see that. The, that's not the ideal wheel alignment that you want on your Formula Ford racing car to be going quickly. So that's unfortunate for Harrison. But once again, that looks, hopefully it, it is as it looks, which is largely cosmetic. The, uh, the ACE team at Sonic will get that turned around and I'm sure we'll see Harrison out again this afternoon for the race. So safety car in this lap. The cool drive safety car. Drivers keeping their tyres warm. Of course, they're perfectly entitled to do this. 
as you would expect. Not slick tyres, they have an all-weather no. tyre. It's an all-weather tyre. It, uh, some people say, why don't you have slicks? Because I think this is actually a better idea, and it's a matter of cost as well, because if you're going to have sets, sets of slicks and sets of widths, you're going to spin up two sets of rims. Yeah, and it also keeps to the, uh, the, the hallmark of the category, which is, again, that relatively low grip, relatively low power. It, it teaches the drivers to uh, maintain the momentum. And with the time remaining, I'm thinking we're probably going to see a one-lap dash to the flag. So uh, Edison Beswick has done all that work to get in front. And uh, again, the nature of the big the, the nature of the big uh, straights here at Sandown. Well, we actually don't know whether we're going to get a green flag or a checkered flag here because we've just gone over 20 minutes. So we, uh, we do think we are going to get the... They're going to get, get one, one more. more. There goes the green flag in the top left. So, so Edison is going to have it all to do here. The last place you want to be is right out in front. It might be two. We've just been told it's, it could be two more laps. He's, so made, a, he's uh, made a good start, though. A uh, really good safety car restart. He's been able to get the brake which has pushed him through, uh, held on to the lead, looks like we've got, oh Jared Farrell was having a look to go to second and that didn't quite work out for him. And He's he might be losing a place to now go around indeed. the outside. Yep. So with one and a half left to go as they go in the back straight this time, Beswick has just snuck away and there's a big Lob slide. Go up on that the... exit curb and with only a 40 mil ride height, when you own up like that, you, uh, you end up a little bit like the turtle. It's just teetering up there. It's uh, the heart would be in the mouth for a, for a couple of seconds there. So Beswick working very hard to break the toe here. He does not want to have Strickland right tucked under his where the rear wing would be if, this car, if these cars had rear wings as they come down to Dandenong Road with a lap and a bit to go. You don't want to be leading and have somebody tow past you in the back straight here at Sandown, which we've seen so many times. So does Bezik give up the lead? No, he's actually eked out no, a he's of done a No, he's done a fantastic job. The guys are racing pretty hard behind him, which may play into his hands. He's just got to put his... I mean, he's got no option. It's, it's eyes down, eyes for, uh, head down, eyes forward, and just go as fast as he can. Yep. Um, and what happens behind him will, but he's got... I think that's a winnable lead that he's got there now. 1.3 seconds. Yeah, Eddie should have this in the bag. A great drive for him. And let's see what it's it's well and truly on for young and old behind though. Farrell and Strickland yep. side Farrell by side Strickland. through turn two, uh, turn one, looking in the battle for second. There's Hobko who's dropped back a little bit, but still trying to make up that ground, but he's got the fastest lap of the race. And they're side by side as they go to two and three. Oh, oh and there's yeah. been a collision and the broken just... suspension, and that will be all she wrote in that part of the battle. But I don't think it's going to no, be they're all, the all still going. All still going. Um, not sure who that was that bumped wheels, but... Beswick at um, the back straight. It's J Farrell and Strickland fighting it out for second ahead of Collins again, and Mays Ruddy. 230, uh, 230 kilometre an hour game of chess right here, ladies and gentlemen. Don't blink. That He's is great racing. Farrell's and covered the line as uh, somebody taking a shortcut there over the S. As Beswick comes out on the last run out of Dandenong Road Corner. The chequered flag is waiting, but who is going to take the honours for second place? That will be a well-deserved win for the Synergy Motorsport Spectrum pilot. And Farrell is holding on for a, a great second in his Spectrum from Strickland in the CHE Miguel. Great drive from Bailey Collins up into fourth from uh, Mains Ruddy. Jack Bussey starting out a second, got swamped off the line, but has held on for sixth. We've got a replay, I believe, coming of the uh, contact that we saw. Uh, it was all very, very busy down there at four. I don't think there was much in this by way of intent. Just a lot of cars trying to occupy the same space. Someone gets, yeah, you can just see that there. Bouncing off the curbs and pushes the car wide. Um, I, I think that was unfortunate contact between Harrison Sellers and uh, uh, young Joe Fawcett is the way that looked to me but again I, I would have seen that as lots of cars um, occupying the same space bouncing off curves not really much in that just unfortunate racing incident and we've we got green flag, flag being shown at the back so revs rising in close to the 7000 rpm rev cut who will get the jump geelong performance center Jared. On and out and they're away a very good start from the front row 
Not much in that at all. And uh, Jack Bussey out of six made a much better start that time around. Has been ruining his two starts this weekend. And have a go at Bailey Collins starting out of row two. So he's got the inside line as I come charging down towards turn one. But Eddie Beswick up the inside in the number 30 car. Look how close it is as they go into turn one. But so far, a nice clean start there for the Formula Ford field. Yeah, nice room given by everybody. A uh, couple of guys running a little wide there and getting shuffled back. So we'll see how this settles down as they get onto the back straight and the field files through turn four. What great, uh, great view there on the locked off camera there on the outside of turn four. And here comes the Congo line up the back straight. How many times have we seen this since the late 1960s when some of the greats of Australian motorsport followed this very path? It's Beswick, Farrell, uh, Strickland, Collins and Bay Ruddy. One, two, three, four, five as they move their way through. Um, uh, it's a great train. There's going to be a bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. There was oh, a bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel wheel action out there at Dandy Road. Who was that went off city? That was uh, Bailey Collins who went off road. Uh, so it'll be, I, I don't know whether or not we'll get a replay of that. Looked like they were just a breaking duel there and contact was made. Shall we, are we going to start the Australian Formula Ford Rally Championship or off-road racing? It could. Well, I think that has been started many years ago. It uh, rarely ends well. These are very much designed to stay on the black stuff. So it's Eddie Bezik from Joe Fawcett. He's made a good start on that opening lap. lap. Jared Farrell from Geelong sitting in P3, but he's coming, coming under fire from, it looks like Damon Woods there in the number 56 car. But here's Matthew Holmes, the paediatrician from Tasmania in the number 41 car. That's a very classy move around the outside. He'll hold that position as they come into turn four once again. Looking nice and tidy is the entire field respecting track limits as well now the formula 40 whoa, look a little bit of a sideways <laughs> moment there just as you say that here's our here's our replay at turn nine of the breaking duel and so bailey's got it in there and look i don't know there's a lot in there it's a light touch uh enough to upset both cars but i think uh you know no one looked out of control or locked up. I think it was just uh, hard racing and a little bit of contact made. But it is on for young and old here in, what have we got here? A, a conga line. First and second are putting a little bit of a gap. And then you've got, what's that? A one, two, three, four, about a seven car <laughs> conga line for third place. What fantastic pictures and great racing. Led by Jack Bussey, of course. He was the pole sitter uh, earlier this weekend. It was a fantastic lap. Uh, in yesterday's qualifying session and he's steadily making his way back through but he's got Jared Farrell just behind him David Woods coming under fire from the recovering uh, Matthew Holmes as well but this is great racing so far they've had a little bit of a talking to from the Formula Ford uh, administrator Phil Marinon just telling them to keep it nice and tidy just try and uh, maybe don't go for the gap that doesn't exist so they're trying to keep uh, well behaved out there at the moment but having said that they are a bunch of uh, young teenagers out there uh, racing for young and young yeah, young young people. I don't know. Can they be held responsible for uh, for what what doesn't uh, is and isn't heard at a driver's briefing? By the way, who's the paediatrician? Matthew Holmes. Is he driving a footwork? Matthew Holmes. No, a Spectrum. If yeah, he should be driving a footwork. That, no, you're Work with me the here. Diatrist. Oh, I thought it was the same thing. No wonder why my, my kids' doctors looked at me funny all those years ago. Beswick, Fawcett, Bussy, one, two, three, Farrell in fourth place. The battle is well and truly on Daniel on Road. Man who wrangles English for a living. But well done. <laughs> Wrestles English for a yes, living. Yes, mangles more to the point. But <laughs> let's get back to the racing at hand. It is as uh, hot as the sun out there today. It is. Eddie and Joe have uh, locked themselves into a nice two-horse two race, and that battle behind them rages. Jared Farrell has got back up in front of Jack Bussey, and Matt Holmes is buying into that as well. Joey Fawcett has just set the fastest lap of the race in pursuit of Eddie Beswick. It's great to see this race. Bailey Collins are now closing in also on, I think that's Tom Davies in front of him. Yeah, Tom Davies had a little bit of an up and down weekend, but he's uh, still holding strong in P10, so we suspect he might make up a few more positions uh, in this race as it unfolds. But P11, Bailey Collins as well. A uh, bit of a tricky weekend as well. Getting it out sideways there was Carly Fleming in the number 42. Miguel, she was a late entry uh, for this weekend. But here's Joe Fawcett all over the back of Bezik. Matthew Holmes having a good look, coming over turn six, but discretion is the better part of Bella. That time around, but Damon Wood's still in the hunt as well. Look at that deep up the inside. So that is Matthew nice Holmes. Move. Matthew Holmes showing that experience and how you get it done. 
That's just a beautiful overtaking move into turn four. Ah, uh, sorry, into Dandy Road corner. Well but past turn four. Jack Bussey also coming on the fire from Damon Woods, who takes that position away now as they come out of turn yeah, 12 and onto the main straight. And watching that, it looks like that has compromised Jake. Jack's run onto the straight, so expect him to come under more pressure at the end of the straight. From who is that pursuing him? I think uh, Cleary behind him. Beswick still leads. That, is, that gap is quarter of a second. We are within six minutes of the chequered flag. A quick reminder that for the opening round of the Victorian State Racing Series here at glorious Sandown this weekend, timed races are being trialled. It's been very positively received by the uh, by the competitors. So we don't actually know how many particular laps are to go, but. Look at this battle for the lead. They are fanned out. Oh, hang on. Have we actually got some separation? No, I, there's, I thought I could only see one car there. It was the two red roll hoops that uh, that uh, made me look because um, because Beswick and Fawcett are the cattle. They are tied together, and this is going to come down the final few corners. Yeah, it's going to be incredibly close. Beswick has been really uh, quick the past, the past few events that he's been entered in the Formula Ford. Joe Fawcett as well, being looked after by the Spectrum camp, and his dad, Mark Fawcett, uh, I believe was a former rally uh, start, and that's Jared Farrell uh, off, and it looks like it's the driver's right-hand side over top of the hill, which is uh, about turn six and seven, so you can see the officials there uh, having a quick look at that one as well. So that's unfortunate for Farrell, the Geelong local. He's dropping down the order, as you can see, on the timing tower on the left-hand side, but it's still hot and frantic out there at the moment. Uh, look, Matthew Holmes at number 41, doing a great job. He suffered a clutch issue uh, in yesterday's opening race, so they had to replace the clutch. Oh, and that's Bailey Collins. He's off on the driver's left-hand side. I think that's between turns one and two. Done Jeez. a great job to gather that up and keep it off the wall. Not sure what happened there, but he's uh, been a little bit wide there the last couple of laps. I don't know if he is uh, just ex over, over exuberance uh, of youth, but we may get a replay to see what happened there. And, and uh, another shout out to Kyle Cotter making his debut. Son of Justin Cotter, who heads up Synergy Motorsport, and he's doing a great job keeping his nose clean and in ninth position. Uh, one would one would want to cast their mind back and uh, wonder what uh, his father Justin's first Formula Ford race meeting resulted in. But Justin was a very fast, very fierce competitor, but uh, often was known to have that exuberance of youth get the better of him. So I think Kyle's got a cleaner copy book than his dad right now. I remember when Justin rookie, uh, when Justin uh, Cotter was a rookie. I remember when John Blanchard was a rookie, but that was a long time ago. Three and a bit minutes to go. Beswick still leads. Fawcett, Holmes, Buzzy, Woods. Uh, they go one, two, three, four, five. They're, we're into the final two laps of the race. The uh, leaders fan out for a race under brakes. And we're getting As we a go replay to a replay of Bailey Collins and uh, unfortunately for Bailey looks like he's uh, done that one by himself bold a uh, bold wide as they say uh, and he'll be ruining that but a lot of learning going on there great family racing operation love the way they go about it Bailey is very well supported by the family so they'll, uh, they'll obviously all be disappointed with that but he is a fine young man a lot of pace uh, a lot of commitment he'll learn from that to get stronger have a go at this run from Joe Fawcett so would you be hazarding a guess here, Paul Zitti, that he might be just holding back at this stage of the race? He's exactly where he wants to be. He's in the box seat to strike late if he wants to try and take out the final race of the weekend. Yeah, look, from early on in the piece, I'm, I'm sure if you had a, saw somewhere where he thought there was a good chance, he'd have been taking it. No two ways about it. But, you know, these guys, they, they are only young, but their experience of racing in go-karts, they're smart enough to be looking in their mirrors. Joe knows that they're gapping the field, which is what you want to do here. You want a two-horse race, not a ten-horse race. So, you know, let's watch the field. We're putting a gap in them, and we'll try and make the move later in the race. But by the same token, you know, Eddie's a, a seasoned campaign we got two ra two laps left to go so who'll want to lead on the last who would know but uh they're they're doing a fantastic job out the front joey will be looking at trying to sum him up see where he can get it done and eddie will probably be keeping a little bit in reserve thinking he's got enough up the sleeve to hold off any challenge in those uh closing laps super impressed by the leading two as well because they've gapped uh 3.1 seconds back to matthew holmes who is Fairly experienced. In fact, he's fallen behind Jack Bussey. So Bussey uh, down from central Queensland uh, to compete this weekend here in Victoria. 
He made his debut in a Formula Ford at Island Magic late last year and he's shown plenty of speed uh, given his relatively new status to the category. So thoroughly impressed by Jack Bussey. But Matthew Holmes himself is fairly uh, experienced behind the wheel, especially in VSRS circles, but he's got Damon Woods behind him for good company as well. So this battle will rage on in the closing lap. This should be one of the final laps of, or should be the final lap of the race with a minute. Yeah, we can confirm the last lap board is out. So this is it, is there? Yeah, this will be the uh, the last opportunity for Joe to make a move if he's going to take the win. And, of course, uh, Edison will be doing absolutely everything in his power to prevent that from happening. It's going to come down to the drag race up the back straight. So this turn four exit will be critical. Will a cool head prevail? Who's going to be able to line this up? Look Very well positioned by Joe. Look at that. There's barely any space between... P1 and P2 force yep. absolutely all over the back of Bezik. So this is going to be an incredible charge coming up the hill, coming up over turn six for the last time. So they fan out Joe Fawcett around the outside. Bezik up the inside in the number 30 car. They're side by side. Look how incredibly close it is. Magnificent. The skill, oh. the skill to drive at that level of commitment at that speed. Just amazing driving from those two young men. Amazing respect to give each other the room. Two very level-headed young men. And Eddie's taking, as he is entitled to do on this closing lap, he's taking a, a sensible defensive Ooh. line. And they're going to be nose to tail as they run down to the start-finish line. And here he comes across yeah. the line. He's got his hand up in the air, so he's and absolutely there you go. chuffed. A win by point one of a second. Uh, great racing from the two. And congratulations to Eddie and to, to Joe. A fantastic result here. Matt Holmes up to third. Oh. And we have, I think that's, that's Fraser, Fraser High. High is uh, unfortunately going to be a DNF. But uh, Bezik from Fawcett from Holmes. Bussy fourth. He'll be happy with that as a way to round the season out, uh, the, the weekend out, I should say, to uh, Damon Woods. And we should share some love to the 1600 category as well. So Richard Davison in that wins Van Diemen RF, RF 95, that beautifully presented car. He's currently leading the way in that class from Grant Walker. So here is a replay uh, of Fraser High's number 11 car. Oh. He's got the front left locked up and yep. he pulls up just in the kitty litter there. So not too much harm done there. They'll be able to load that back onto the Fraser, oh sorry, onto the trailer. Uh, and he looks like he's a little bit stuck there. Not too much clearance underneath yeah, these uh, no, very low Formula 4s. 40 millimetres is the minimum ride height, which is uh, somewhat less than the height of the ripple strips here so they do get turtled an absolute pleasure to have called the formula forward action from Sandown at round one of the triple eight home loans at victorian state circuit racing championship even better with a brace of brannigans